Australia has some of the best beaches in the world and we want everyone to be able to use these beaches safely, which is why you need to be aware of some of the dangers that can be present around our coastline. I'm Anthony Bradstreet from Surf Life Saving. And I'm Dr. Rob Brander, a surf scientist from the University of New South Wales. Today we're going to talk to you about one of the greatest hazards on Australian beaches, rip currents. In the summer months in Australia, somebody drowns on our beaches every two or three days. That works out to be about almost 70 or 80 people every summer. Most of those drownings and most of the thousands of rescues that happen are because of rip currents. So it's very important when you go to the beach that you understand rips and you understand how to keep yourself safe if you get caught in one. Whenever you go swimming at the beach, you should always go swimming in between the red and yellow flags. That's because the lifeguards and lifesavers are trained to put these flags in an area which is away from any dangers, like rocks or rip currents. The lifeguards and lifesavers also set themselves up and watch the flags. So if you get into trouble, they're right there to help you. Okay, well let's hit you with some statistics. We know that about 96% of Australians know they should swim between the red and yellow flags, but 40% sometimes don't. Now that's a problem, because we also know that at any given time in Australia, there's about 17,000 rips operating on our beaches. So if you don't know how to spot a rip, which most Australians don't, that's a real problem. Another thing is that there's 11,000 beaches in Australia, which is great, except that only 4% are actually patrolled by lifesavers and lifeguards. So if you don't know how to spot a rip and you're swimming on an unpatrolled beach, there's a good chance you might get stuck in one. So what are rip currents? It's a really good question. Well, rips are all about breaking waves. If there's no waves breaking, there's no rips. But when waves do break, they break in shallow water. And the white water you see is water that's being pushed towards the beach and it piles up. Rips are one way to get that extra water piling up at the beach back offshore. And most rips flow offshore in deeper channels between the shallower sandbars. And they exist to get that extra water back offshore. There's some myths and misconceptions about rips. One is that rips will pull you under. Well, they don't. There's no such thing as an undertow and rips definitely don't pull you under the water. The second is that rips are often called rip tides. Well, they're not a tide. A tide is a wave that goes up and down during the day. Rips are currents that flow pretty steady. The third is that rips will take you way out to sea. Well, the truth is, they don't. Basically, rips are strong, narrow currents that flow from the shoreline out towards the breaking waves. So if the waves are breaking about 50 meters offshore, that's about how far the rip will take you. The best way to spot rips is to look for nice dark gaps going out through the surf. So right here, we've got a nice dark gap. It almost looks like a road or a path going out through the surf, and that's the rip. Over here, we've got a shallow sandbar. On the other side of the rip, there's another shallow sandbar. That makes the waves break. All that white water piles up on the beach, starts flowing along the beach, and then it turns offshore and goes out in the rip and that's how you spot a rip. A view from a headland is always a good way to spot a rip because you're looking down on the beach and they're always easier to see from above. But down here on the water's edge, rip currents can be a lot harder to find and you need to spend a bit more time looking for them. If you're swimming at a patrolled location, there are always safety signs pointing out the dangerous currents and you should avoid the water around those signs. What we do is we put in some harmless purple dye to show where the water goes. The great thing about the dye is that wherever, wherever the rip is going, that's where the dye will go as well. Sometimes rips go in circles and can often go back onto the shallow sandbars, but all rips also have a habit of pulsing. And what that means is suddenly the rip will take off and literally squirt out the back for only a short period of time, maybe 30 seconds or less. You can see the, the chopped up, messy white water that's just gone out and then it's just stopped. And that's one, one common thing about these flash rips is that they can suddenly occur anywhere where there's suddenly been a large group of waves breaking and it pushes the rip out and then it disappears. Finally, we get something called a permanent rip or a headland rip. And these are rips that are pushed against the headland and they're there almost all the time. So it's another good reason to always be careful when you're swimming close to headlands and rocks. As we've seen, rips can change from day to day and even time to time. The problem is that they can look like they're the safest place to swim on the beach because they are the calm water. Fortunately, it's the white water where the waves are breaking that are actually the safest place to swim. So that brings us to our first rip safety tip. 
To avoid rip currents, always swim between the red and yellow flags. It can be a pretty scary experience being caught in a rip current, but you can survive them by knowing your options. The main thing is to stay calm and float. Rips are only a flow of water. They're not going to pull you down or underwater and they're not going to take you all the way out to sea. If you need help, raise an arm and attract attention so the lifesavers and lifeguards can see you and they'll come out and help you. What we do know about rip currents is that sometimes they flow in circles and can bring you back onto the sandbank. What they don't do is they don't flow into the middle of the ocean. So while you're waiting for help, there's a good chance that you might end up being brought back onto the safety of the sandbar. Lifeguards and lifesavers are really good at spotting people who might get themselves into trouble before they do. We always try to move these people into a safer area and tell them what's wrong. Another option is to escape the rip by swimming parallel to the beach. This is usually towards the breaking waves and the white water of the sandbank. Once you're in this area, you can usually stand up or the waves will help push you back towards the shoreline. Remember, if you ever feel tired in the water, float to conserve your energy. The most important thing is to keep your head above the water and stay calm. One thing you should never do is swim against a rip current. These things can flow pretty fast and if you swim against it, you're just going to tire yourself out and possibly swim backwards. Rip currents on their own don't make people drown. In fact, every day, surfers, swimmers, lifesavers and lifeguards use rip currents as the best way to get from the shoreline through the surf to the open water. So you can survive rip currents by knowing your options. If you need help, stay calm, float and attract attention. Another option is to escape the rip current by swimming parallel to the beach. Most importantly, if you ever feel tired, conserve your energy and always remember that the waves can assist you back to the shoreline. So before you go to the beach this summer, learn how to spot a rip. And when you do go to the beach, get in the habit of looking for them before you go swimming. And remember to always swim between the red and yellow flags. For more information, visit sls.com.au and have a surf safe summer.